Good morning, church. How we doing this morning? All right. <laughs> if you will please stand for the invocation. Before we get into the invocation, I'm going to ask, I know a lot of us use our cell phones or other uh, digital devices to, to read the scripture. If you wouldn't mind just putting that on vibrate this morning so we don't have any distractions during the service, that would be great. Let us pray. Father in heaven, here we are once again, standing in your house, Lord. We're thankful to be in your house, Father. We ask that you join us in this house, Lord, that your presence flows through each and every one of us, from the front pew to the last pew, to those members standing outside the door, Lord, to the members in the choir box, Father. We ask that you bless this service. Bless the man that's going to bring the word, Lord. Bless the ears that are going to hear it. We ask that you bless those who couldn't make it this, here this morning but had a mind to, Father. We ask that you continue to bless our entire family, our church family, present and unpresent, Lord. We ask that you continue to bless this city, Lord. Come into this service and use us. Don't allow us to be spectators, Lord, but use us. Allow us to be active participants in your service, Father. We are here to praise your name, Lord. We recognize that nothing can be done without you, Father. Without your hand in it, Lord, nothing will move. So we ask that you come into this place and move this service right now, Father. Reach each and every one of us, Lord. Brighten us. Brighten our spirits, Lord. Lift our spirits, Lord. Allow us to go out into the communities we live in, into this community, Lord, and be a blessing to someone else, Father. Come into this place. Make your presence known in this place, Father. We ask that blessing, Lord. That's all we ask. That's all we need. That's all we'll ever need, Father, is for your presence to be known in our lives so that we may be a blessing to others, Lord. Come into this service right now, Lord. Not later, but right now, Father. Come into this place. Come into this place. Let us feel your warmth on our skin as if it were the sun, Lord. We ask that you come into this place. Bless each and every one of us. Let us sing the songs of Zion from deep within our souls, Lord. Let us heal. Let us heal from all the brokenheartedness we've had throughout the last week, Lord. We ask that you come into this place right now and make your presence known to those who are hurting, Lord. Right now, Father. We ask that one and only thing. Bless this service, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give God some more praise this morning. Come on now, church. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Psalms. It, Psalms 100, it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God, it is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. I say be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Let's give God some more praise, church. Come on now. Come on now, he woke us up this morning, got us started. Amen, amen, amen. All right, choir. I had enough.
It's prayer time, CCC, but before you move, it's been a reasonably rough week this week. We've had two of our family members who have had death in their family. One, I would say, is in the natural order of things. When God lets you live to be 98 years old, that's the natural order of things. 
But it does not lessen the pain when that person leaves us. You've heard me say time and time again that if my mother and father were still here and left today, it wouldn't have been long enough. So it certainly wasn't long enough at 81 and 86, but God is going to have his way. And then on the other end of the line, we had a young person pass this week, and not in the normal order of things. So we're going to pray for the smaller family this morning, which you come forward, who lost their father, grandfather, great-grandfather at 98 years old. And then we want Kaki, you, and Inez to come forward. He lost a daughter this week. That's not the normal order of things. Come on, church family, would you gather around now? I will do the special prayer for this family, and then I'm going to ask if Deacon Holman would lead us in our corporate prayer. Come on up close, please. Thank you. We're just going to wait. In my old age, I've gotten patient. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come now, recognizing that you are an all-wise God. We recognize that you are sovereign. You can do what you want to when you want to, how you want to, to whom you want to, in the way you want to. We recognize that you're a sovereign God. But we pray for these two families now. One who lost a 98-year-old father, grandfather, great-grandfather. One who lost a young daughter. Bless right now in the name of Jesus. It's at a time like this when I now recognize why the old folk used to say we'll understand it better by and by. Because we don't understand it right now. But we want you to open our hearts and open our eyes that we might understand. But most of all, give these families strength and courage to face the days ahead. Oftentimes, God, death will bring out the worst and the best in folk. We're praying that it brings out only the best as they go through the days ahead and navigate their way through this very difficult time. We pray that you would hold them up, keep them strong. Let them know that you've never left them nor forsaken them, that you're with them even right now. Wipe the tears from their eyes. Let them know it's okay to cry. That's why you gave them those tear ducts. It's all right to be broken hearted. When you love someone and you lose them, your heart's going to be broken. And that's all right. Because we have a God that can mend a broken heart. And we ask you now, God, to start that repair process. Even before we have the funeral services, start that repair process right now. Bless and keep them now from the youngest to the oldest, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. 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 We have a request here. There's not a name on here, but it says, prayers for healing for all my family near and far. All right. So we'll say, Father alone, knows all about it. 
Father alone understands why. Cheer up, my brother, and live in the sunshine. We'll understand it better by and by. When death has come, taking our loved ones, leaving our home so lonely and drear. Hallelujah, love. We'll understand it better by and by. Father and our God, is, once again we come before you, God, with humbled hearts and bowed down heads. We come, Lord, just to say thank you. Lord, some hearts are heavy this morning, but Lord, we know you know all about it. You too righteous a God to make to error. And Lord, we thank you for an opportunity one more time to gather between us these consecrated walls. Lord, we've been going here and there to and fro, and Lord, hell hounds have been on our trails, God. Uh, Lord, I read the paper, and the paper said uh, that some family member had passed away. But I read my Bible, and the Bible said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And Lord, it's always better to be with God uh, than to be with friends. And Lord, we thank you for an opportunity right now, God. Lord, lift us up down. Lift us up our bow down heads, Lord. Right Lord, a songwriter said, weeping may endure right for night, but joy, right. joy cometh in the morning. Right. How long will it be for your morning, God? Weeping, God, weeping can endure, but joy, joy, Lord, we're happy, God, for you said that you would wipe our weeping eyes, God. Sometimes we cry, Lord, and our tears roll down our face and shake hands under our chin, God, but we know that you are God who can never err, God. We thank you for the ones who have gathered around this morning, God. We thank you for the problems that they brought to you. Bring it all to the altar and leave it there, God. You said a few, he said that you would pick us up and turn us around, place our feet on solid ground. Lord, sometimes our day get weary. Sometimes our way get dark. But we know, God, uh, you are light in a path of the darkness, God. We know you bring joy instead of sorrow. Lord, you said, put, cast my cares upon you. Right now, Lord, uh, we asking you to come on in the room, God. Somebody needs you right now. Somebody needs you to be joy to them. Somebody needs you, God. Somebody's sick right now. Somebody needs you to be a doctor right now. Somebody's in trouble, Lord. Somebody's children, God, has been wayward, God. Somebody needs you right now. Right now, Lord. Then, Lord, by and by and after a while, by and by when praying days over. Yes, sir. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, sir. When we've gone on to glory. Yes, sir. Just want to hear him say, well done. Well done. Thy good and faithful servant. Well done. You've been faithful over a few things. Somebody said, I've got a mother over there. Yes, sir. I've got a father over there. Yes, but most of all, I want to see King Jesus. Yes, sir. See the man that saved me. See the man that picked me up and turned me around. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for a chance to pray. Thank you, Lord. These blessings, all blessings, dear God. We ask in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of his precious Holy Ghost. All of God's people said amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Hug somebody. Let them know that Jesus loves you. And so do I.
Amen. I was going to ask the doorkeepers if they would seat any remaining family members. I don't see any there. So we don't mind waiting on the Lord, but let's not make the Lord wait on us. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. Open you the windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I will leave you in the hands of our capable soldiers of the Christian Church of Chester. Amen. If our outside sections would please stand, it's offering time, church. A heavy dose of me this morning <laughs> to make myself comfortable. No, um, so uh, a couple of our uh, Deacon Benji and I, fellow deacons on the m and &E board are 
at their conclave for their fraternity. So that is why you're seeing a lot of me. Um, if there are any visitors worshiping with us today, would you please stand? Any visitors? I thought I recognized all your faces. <laughs> which, which means we're doing a horrible job. Um, uh, let's, let's get some visitors in here next week. I feel like this is like the second time in a row we haven't had visitors. So we need to get out, tell people about the Lord first, right? Like tell people about Jesus and what, he, what he, he's done for you uh, and let your, your uh, testimony uh, speak for the great works of the Lord. And then people will follow you. Um, and if they come here, great. If they go to another church, also great. But we do need to start pe speaking to people about the blessings that uh, we've, uh, we've been given from the Lord. Amen. So announcements. Let's see. You got an announcement, DJ? <laughs> Coming up. Coming up here? Come on. They're just going to stand there. Oh, here. here we go. You got to be able to see people. All right, here we go. So we got an announcement from CUNY. You want to hold this? Community, community, act, you hold second, read it. community Action Agency of Delaware County. They're now recruiting students for the Clinical Medical Assistance Program. Uh, the, uh, the registration to attend an information session happens on July 16th, July 18th, July 23rd, July 25th, July 30th, or August 1st. Information sessions are from 1 to 2 at 1414 Meeting House Road in Booth Wynn. I'm gonna post this on the uh, bulletin board out there, take a picture of it, what have you, let someone know if you think that they uh, could benefit from being a student in this clinical medical assistant program. Um, I don't really have any other announcements except uh, this past week on the 8th, me and my wife celebrated our 13th wedding anniversary. So, Yeah, so we, uh, you know, I, that's my own personal announcement. <laughs> Sometimes when you're on the mic, you can take a little uh, liberty. Uh, Pastor, uh, I don't think we, is there a Zumba? Yeah. Is there a Zumba? All right, I should have made the Zumba announcement before the last one. Like that. Uh, so Zumba, this Wednesday, 6 o'clock. Thank you, I always look back because I know somebody back there is doing Zumba. So Zumba, Wednesday, 6 o'clock. Feel free to come in, get yourselves in shape, have some fun uh, while you're doing it. That's actually the best way to get in shape. Uh, that's all the announcements I have. Actually, you guys can seat if the ushers, uh, before we hear from the desk of the pastor, if the ushers can seat uh, any of our remaining family members and guests. You ready to go? You got an announcement? Okay. DJ said if you have any more of those crackers he was eating, you can gladly take them off your hands. One DJ. Yes, you can go ahead and seat now. That's fine. I woke up this morning at 4.45, which is not unusual. The unusual part was that I was 135 miles away from home. And I decided 4.45, if I leave at 5, We'll be okay. Get 15 more minutes. Bad mistake. Woke up again at 6 o'clock. Now time's running short. The RV didn't have gas. But I looked at it and I said, it has just enough to make it back in front of my front door. And we did. So I thank you for your prayers. because I know somebody must have been praying because there's only fumes in that tank right now. Annette and I went away for three, four days this week to Nescapec, Pennsylvania. And I can count on these fingers how many people I saw that looked like me. <laughs> there were more. There were maybe 20 of us. Oh, she thinks there were 20 of us. I don't know where she was. <laughs> What was in that iced tea you Wait, were drinking? You have to, you have to 
Oh, she's counting the guys, the, the, the singers as well. <laughs> I mean, if you go to a blues festival, guess what you're going to see? Or well, should anyway. How did you do this week with your tongue? <laughs> that, did you dominate your tongue? I see some people out there going, did you dominate your tongue or did your tongue dominate you? I almost made it. I almost made it. If I was playing horseshoes, I would have made it. But there was a document that I needed off of my computer, and I went into my computer to get the document. When I closed out after doing a whole day's work, I hadn't saved it. I'm not going to say any more than that. <laughs> that I hadn't saved it. If it hadn't been for that one occurrence, I would have been okay. And you know what? Misery loves company. I tried to bait a net the rest of the week. <laughs> I, I tried to get her to talk about somebody. Then I, that didn't work, so I tried to get her to talk about me. But she kept saying, uh, uh, and wouldn't do it. So this week, we're going to try a different one. <clears throat> and because I am not God and I did not write the scripture, I am going to give you some leeway. You know, the scripture says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen. And that if you looked at a person to lust after them, you have committed sin already. Amen. Uh, we're going to not be that strict this week, but we're going to go on another sin fast. That doesn't mean hurry up and sin. It is sin fast, just like you fast when you eat. Once you walk out those doors this morning, because some of y'all didn't make it to the fire line last week. So once you walk out those doors this morning, it's on. We're gonna do see how far in the week you can go without committing a sin. And I'm not talking about the ones you think because you wouldn't leave the room. If I was talking about the ones you think, I'm talking about the ones you actually do. Amen. And include with that again this week, make your tongue behave the whole week long. Amen. Let's connect those two things together this time and see how we do. Do you know something? It's amazing how many times you have to catch yourself yeah. when you're trying to Man manage your tongue. I mean, there were several times I was almost about to say it, and I had to pull it back. So that just shows us Christians how far we really have to go. That we don't need to puff our chest out just because we're here every Sunday morning. We need to do some work out there. Um, advisory council meeting this week. Uh, 10 a.m. Please be here. Please be on time. And I'm going to say something that's going to scare the whole congregation to death. Because the last time I said this, it was two years before I unveiled what it was I was going to do or what God had asked to be done. I'm going to say it again this time. I am thinking about something that God has laid on my heart that if he's not in it, it will not happen. But that does not deter me from wanting to try. So if he is not in it, it won't happen. Now, you remember the last time we did that, we came out with the church merger. So that should scare you to death. If God is not in it, it won't happen. Where's our Florida runner? Come on up. Give us a report. I need a report. I need a report. I need a microphone. Come on. She got medals around her neck. Sit. 
loud. My name is Kaylee. Okay. Now, what happened when you were in Florida? We got first place and fifth place. First place and fifth place. Congratulations. Amen. Very good. Thank you. Looks like she also got sun kissed. <laughs> remind me next week, please remind me that I have one other thing on my list to share with you today. I want to share that next week. So remind me next week that, Pastor, you had something you want to talk about this week. Uh, uh, but I, I'm choosing not to talk about it this week, but it will be said. And that's it. We're happy to see Minister Clayton and family this morning. <laughs> Amen. Uh, he's going to, to deliver the word, and there are a couple of other people in the congregation whose names I'm not going to call, but we're happy to see you here this morning as well. Haven't seen you for a minute, but we're glad you're here today. Amen. 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 Come on, choir. I believe it's your turn. After that, we will have the preach word from Minister Clayton. Uh, if that gentleman needs to be seated, would you please, anybody that needs to be seated, seek them now, please. Thank you so much. Is that who I think it is? Yeah, we bump into each other at the store, at the market, and he keeps saying, Pastor, I'm going to show up one Sunday. Here he is. There's one right here on the second row. Okay.
in CCC? Wasn't I just here a couple weeks ago? <laughs> it's always a blessing to be with you. I consider CCC my second home now. So it's always a blessing. So before I get into the word, I want to acknowledge my family with me. My mother is here with me. And me and my wife on 7-7 just celebrated our 12th wedding anniversary. So I don't take anniversaries lightly because I know some people who got married the same time we did and they not married no more. So it's only by the grace of God that she still deals with my craziness. So and it's good to see Bruce Neal. That's my second dad. Appreciate your coming. And my frat brother, Brother James Brinson, good to see you this morning, bro. Appreciate you. Y'all know I'm not going to be long, so get your Bibles. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And it says, and lest I should be exalted above measure, by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. For just a few minutes, I want to come with you with the topic, when God is enough. Lord, we need you this morning. We need your strength. But we know that you have given us the grace to get through whatever we're going through. So, Lord, we submit ourselves at your feet right now. We ask that you breathe through this place like you've been doing and let your will be done. For your will, nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. When God is enough. The past few years have helped me realize that life isn't one size fits all. And just because you may not have gone through something that someone else has gone through, just keep living. Because sooner or later, it's going to show up in your life. No matter your age, where you live, or what you do, you can expect that life will come at you hard and fast. For some it's more, and for others it's less. But the reality is, life happens. The test, however, is not in how much we go through, but in how we go through it. We look at situations and say, God, I can't take any more of this. God, if I have to go through one more thing, I'm going to lose my mind up in here. But the victory doesn't come at the end of our struggle. The victory comes in the midst of our struggle. It's the in-between time from our struggle to our victory that shows us who we really are and what we are truly made of. Our character gets tested in the struggle, and our faith gets tested in the suffering. We ask God to take away the pain. We cry and say, God, why me and why now? We lose the job without another one in sight. Our loved one dies, and it wasn't expected. And even if it was expected, we still weren't ready. In spite of our best efforts, the relationship just didn't work. And now we're single again, and we just knew that this was going to be the one. Sometimes God gives the answer, and sometimes he doesn't. 
But what do we do when God answers and it's not what we want to hear? How do we handle it? Do we pout and sulk and say, I'm not doing this anymore? Do we cuss and fuss and say, God, if you love me so much, then why am I going through all of this? The truth of the matter is, the reason why we are going through so much is because he does love us. You see, God won't give us more until we're ready to handle the more. God prepares us to receive and he allows us to go through to see if we are mature enough to deal with all that comes with his blessings. His love is unconditional, but his blessings do have conditions. And the conditions are that we have to be able to handle what he is about to give us. So we look at our example today, who was our friend named Paul. He's a man called by God to do great things in the kingdom. He gave up everything he had to follow Christ. He was beaten. He was thrown in jail. He was talked about all for the sake of Christ. And yet, he still had some personal issues. And some personal issues that he had to deal with. Now, you would think that with him giving so much of his life to Christ, that he would be exempt from having to deal with anything else. But he still had to go through some problems. In verse 7, he says that because of the great revelations that he was getting, in order to stay humble, he was given a thorn in his flesh. He was given an ailment, a personal struggle a physical embarrassment, something that did not allow him to move on his own strength and power. He had to depend on God. God had to be enough for him because he couldn't depend on his friends because when he called, they didn't answer the phone. He couldn't go to his family because although, when, because although he was there for them when they went through, when it was his turn, all they gave him was unsolicited advice and judgment. He couldn't depend on that thing or that person that he keeps in the wings to ease his flesh that he always goes to when he gets stressed. You know that thing that we keep in the wings that we try to don't let people know that we go to. God had to be his all and all. God had to be the one that he turned to when all he wanted to do was cry. And God had to be the God in every aspect of his life. Now, our text never goes into detail what his issue was. It didn't say that his rent or mortgage was four months past due and he just got an eviction or foreclosure notice. It never said that he was having marriage issues or that he was having problems on the job. It didn't say that everything was hitting him all at the same time and all he wanted to do was hide. But whatever it was, it was something that kept him on his knees in God's face and dependent on the Lord. This brings me to my first point. What is keeping us dependent on God? What is the thing that lies beneath the surface that is there to keep us humble? Paul had to come to grips with the fact that he had an issue. He had to take the time to assess himself and know that either God had to take this thing away from him so that he could be effective, or God was going to have to give him the grace to be effective with it. So a question, can we be effective in our weaknesses? Do we know what our weaknesses and struggles are that keep us dependent on God, or do we just act like that they don't exist and say, well, they aren't bothering anybody, and it's, it's just how I am? A few years ago, I had a situation where I had to be totally dependent on my wife. I was getting ready for work in the morning, and somehow, some way, my back went out. And I mean, my back went on vacation. It was not coming back anytime soon. She had already left for work, and I had to maneuver around the house with all this pain until she came home that day. I was totally helpless. I couldn't even go down the stairs for four days. And when you're used to getting up and doing whatever, whenever, being that vulnerable can be extremely frustrating. But because of the level of commitment in our relationship, not only did my wife not complain, but she tried to do everything to ease my pain and to make me comfortable. The same is in our relationship with God. God knows our strengths, but more importantly, he knows our weaknesses. And he knows when we're going to be weak. He knows what we can handle, and he knows when things get too heavy for us. He says, put all your weight on me. I can handle it. You may not be able to go at your old pace, but I'm there with you every step of the way, and I am continually telling you to stop trying to do everything by yourself. Trust me 
and fully depend on me, your pain is my pain, and I will be here for you no matter what you go through. You see, it's all well and good that we know our strengths, and we should know our strengths to use them for the glory of God and for the benefit of others, but we also must know what our weaknesses are. We have to acknowledge those things that we try to hide from everybody, those things that don't make us look uh, attractive, those things that expose how we really feel and what we really do. We aren't always at our best, and many times we put on the mask of looking good when on the inside we're dirty and disgusting. We're mad and we don't know why. We're hurting and depressed and we can't put our finger on the reason why. Our weakness can be our attitude. It could be a lustful spirit. It can be excessive spending. It can be laziness. It can be a whole laundry list of issues. But the question is, can we function in our dysfunction and allow God to work on us to get better so that the times of our weaknesses are minimal when they show up in our lives? I know I have a bunch of them. My attitude isn't always right. My eyes don't always look at wholesome and family shows on television. I may not always have an encouraging word from the Lord for somebody. Sometimes I may encourage them to get out my face and I might give them turn by turn directions on where they can go so I make sure they get there safely and where they need to go. Amen, lights and walls. <laughs> but the question is, do I allow my weakness to stay a weakness or do I expose it so I can get better and allow God to work on me? When I get up here to preach, I have to depend on God to get me through because I stutter. I stutter since I was a child. So if I don't depend on God to get me through, I'm going to be up here trying to get the words out and y'all going to be like, okay, can we keep it moving? I got stuff to do. But if I depend on God to move me out the way so that he can be seen, he will get the glory in the midst of my thorn. God has to be enough. We must take the time to address our weaknesses or our weaknesses will take the time to address us in the worst possible way at the worst possible time. But God knows when we're weak. And when we are weak, he has made provisions so that he will get the glory even in the midst of our weaknesses. See, we don't like to be weak. We don't like pain. And we don't like not being in total control of our lives. This brings me to my second point. We will do whatever we can to maintain total control. When we realize we're weak, we tend to do everything we can to be strong again and get our control back. When my daughter Victoria was young, she was very inquisitive. So much so that some of her teachers nicknamed her why, because she always had a question and she always wanted to know what the answer was. Sometimes we had the answer, sometimes we didn't, but that never stopped Victoria from asking. Paul was like that with God, and he asked three times if he would take the thorn away from him, but he never got the answer that he was looking for. First time he went to God, he said, God, can you please take this thing away from me? And God responded, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. The second time, he went with a little more intensity and said, God, come on now, stop playing. Can you please take this thing away from me? It hurts. But God gave him the same answer. Third time, he went, asked God again, God, come on now, I need you to take this thing away from me. I don't think that I can really function with it. And God said, my grace is sufficient. The third time he went, Paul was frustrated. He was irritated, and he wanted to be done with it all, but God wasn't phased, and he kept giving him the same answer. Each time he asked with a greater desire for the situation to be gone, but God gave the same response each time. He said, I am enough for you to get through this. My divine power is all you need. So how do we handle it when God says, I am enough for you. We go to God with the same determination for it to be done, but God being the patient man he is, he just sits there with his feet up and says, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. He says, I know it hurts. I know you're struggling, but I am enough. Can we accept the fact that God is enough for us no matter 
what the situation is, no matter how much pain we're in, no matter how long he has to keep us in the same cycle, dealing with the same limp, dealing with the same sickness, still stuck in the same frustrating job, the same financial issues, the same irritating thing. He never said that he wouldn't bring us out. He just said that I'm all you need to get through it. I'm enough. You don't need to go play, play the uh, slots or the lottery. I'm enough. You don't need to make that phone call at 3 a.m. I'm enough. You don't have to do, depend on him, her, or it. I am enough. So after Paul cried and pleaded, and the only response he got was, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul then provides my third point. He had peace about the situation. He said, I will boast about my weakness so that Christ's power can work through me. He said, okay, God, you got this. I'm going to calm down. I'm going to do my part, and I'm going to trust you. Amen. You are enough for me, and because of that, I'm going to be satisfied. Yes, it takes a certain level of spiritual maturity to get to that place of peace when everything is still going haywire. But when you get to that place of peace, that is when God really begins to work in and through our lives. 2018 had to be one of the toughest years that I went through in recent memory. It tested me in ways I didn't even imagine that I was going to be tested in. One of the toughest situations that hit me last year was dealing with the death of my best friend, Deacon Kenny Grimes. One of the things that I admired most about Kenny was the fact that even though he struggled with sickness for a long time, he always kept a smile on his face. Even when I knew he wasn't feeling well, he always found a way to make you laugh. He and I had many chats, and although he knew that one day God was going to call him home sooner than he wanted to go, he displayed a level of peace and a quiet confidence knowing that God had his back no matter what and that his family would always be taken care of. He had peace, and it showed. Being his friend taught me a valuable lesson that no matter what I go through, if I can't handle it, then that means it's God's job and I need to stay unemployed in that situation and allow God to be God and allow him to be enough for me. I see people who are sick, but they always have a smile the way Kenny did. I watch people walk with a cane and struggle to stand up, but they never stop moving forward. I watch people who I know are struggling financially and dealing with many other issues, but they don't let that stop their praise or dictate how they interact with you because they still say, to God be the glory. And you wonder how they can have so much peace, and the answer is God is enough for them. They have learned to be content in whatever state they're in. They've learned to walk with God in spite of it all. They've decided in their mind and spirit that God will get the glory out of my weakness. God will get the glory out of what I can't handle. And God will get the glory. Why? Because God is enough. God says, I'm all you need for right now. Don't worry about tomorrow because I have control of that. Just know that I am enough. But in order to give him full control, we have to lose control. Paul had peace. Where are we at? God is saying, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you can't handle, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. God's waiting for us to mature and say, yes, God, whatever you say is what I'm going to believe. It's easy to quote scripture, but God wants us to live the scripture that we quote. God wants us to believe in what we call him. We call him Jehovah Jireh, our provider, and he wants us to believe that he will do it. We call him Jehovah Rohi, our shepherd, and believe that he's leading us. We call him Jehovah Shama. He is present. Believe that he's present and active in our situations. We call him Jehovah Nisi, our banner. Believe that he's fighting for us. He spoke to Moses through the burning bush, and when Moses asked him what his name was, he said, tell the people I am that I am. What does that mean? He said it doesn't mean that He's not there. It means that he's whatever we need him to be. He didn't say that I was or that I'm going to be. He said, I am. It's who he is. So whatever we need him to be, he is that. He is the one who delivers and is never late. He is the one who heals and has never lost the patient. He is the one who will provide and has more to give. He is God. 
and because he is, he will. And because he is, he has. And because he is, it's already done. It's done in the spirit and he's waiting for us to catch up in the natural. It's time for us to say what, what we mean and mean what we say. And Romans 8.38 says it like this. And it says, and I am convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Neither death nor life, either angels or demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the power of hell can separate us from the love of God. Christian Church of Chester, it's time for us to know that God is enough. I don't know what your situation is, but God is enough. I don't know what's coming your way this week, but God is enough. Speak to your situation and say, God is enough. If it's your finances, write something, write a blank check and say, enough is enough. If it's, if it's your health, look at yourself and say, enough is enough. If it's your family or your marriage, look at your spouse and say, enough is enough. Because if God is enough, then enough is enough. If God is enough, he'll fix it. If God is enough, he'll do it. If God is enough, he's going to make it happen in his time, in his way for his glory, for your good. Enough is enough. My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Why? Because God is enough. And because God is enough, enough is enough. I'm done. Bless you. Amen. Is he enough? Is he enough? Amen. If there's someone here this morning that has not yet accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, you can do so right now. It's simple. It's easier said than done. But you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead, and the scripture says, Thou shall be saved. Somebody out there might have gone away for a while and tried it your own way again, but you're ready to come home. God is waiting just for you. And then, perhaps, I know people didn't stand when we asked for visitors to stand, but I know my sheep. Everybody in here is not a member of the Christian Church of Chester. If you're looking for a church home, we invite you to worship with us. We are not perfect, but we're striving each and every day. Do we make mistakes? Yes. We dust ourselves off and try it again. Why don't you come today? There's time. Why don't you stand, church, right now? No better day, no better time, and no better place. Why don't you come? There's time. If he's speaking to you right now, why don't you come today? There's time.
right now. We already have the information uh, for the homegoing celebration for Demetra M. Dawson Loper. It will be at the Good Samaritan Church at 212 West Lancaster Avenue, Paoli, Pennsylvania, 19301. Viewing will be from 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. with the service beginning at 10 a.m. This will be on Friday, July 19th. On Friday, July 19th. We're gonna post this out on the board, uh, so if one of the deacons can come get it now, we'll know it's posted before we leave. Service. And uh, glad to see Deacon Hudson made it in. That uh, He texted me last night and said he was catching a red eye, he'd be late for service. I texted him back and I said, I might be late myself. <laughs> and lo and behold, I almost, well, I was later than normal. We got in here about 9.15 this morning. That's not usual for us. Uh, but uh, glad to see you made a special effort. And I am going to go ahead and say this week what uh, I was going to hold until next week because I have seen that... Uh, some of the folk who I've already talked to this week, uh, they know who they are, and so you'll just take this for what it's worth. In order for us to fill the seats at CCC, we are never ever gonna have a pack a pew service where we request, you, request for you to come for us to honor someone that's deceased in your family. That's not an honor. They tell you right on the program, their goal is to pack a pew. If they want to pack their pews at other churches, there are enough sinners in the city of Chester that you could pack the entire church. Don't try to pack a pew with Christians from other churches. Pack your pew on Sunday morning with sinners from the street. I know there are enough of them out there. I know there are enough of them out there. I had two families call me this week and say, Pastor, we're not going to be at service Sunday because they're honoring my deceased somebody at such and such a church. And I said, I'm, let me tell you what's on my mind right now. Send me a copy of the program, please. They sent me a copy. And right there on the caption, it said, pack a pew. I said, that's not an honor. That's packing a pew. I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that stuff out. Let them go work for theirs just like we work for ours. There are sinners in the streets of Chester that need to be saved. We don't have to go take any member from any other church in order for us to do our job. Now, I'm done with that. So when you get that invitation to come honor your family member that died 30 years ago, Tell them you have a church service to go to, and it's a CCC. Amen. Amen. Now then, I had something else to say, but I'm getting old now. No. <laughs> Are there any other folk other than Jeff uh, that got married this month? in the month of July. Who? Oh, Aaron. We're not going to sing to you, but we want to recognize you. Come on up. Come on up. We want to we recognize you. We, we, we want to recognize you. This is our second Sunday when we sing happy birthdays, but from now on on second Sunday, we're also going to recognize uh, those folk who are doing it God's way. 
Amen. Take your time. And Jeffrey, would you go get that walker that's on that wall right there? Thank you. Okay, if you've been married one year, raise your hand. Not, not, I mean, I'm going to get to you in a minute. Two, three, two, two years, newlyweds. I mean, really newlyweds. <laughs> Compared to 49 newlyweds, just ba not even dry behind the ear yet. All right, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 12, 13, 14. Oh, 12, 13. All right, got it. Uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 19. Amen. Amen. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 30, 32, uh, 31. I'm, I'm going to skip a ways now. Uh, 45? Do I need to back up? 43. 43, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 50, 57. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. That's a blessing. Amen. 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 You may be seated. God bless you. Thank you all. Amen. Amen. That's, that's great stuff there. Amen. And now, for those folk who were born in July, <laughs> why don't y'all come on up? July babies. Amen. <laughs> All right now. Get on up here. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wants to get my size. Right? I remember. <laughs> okay, church family, let's stand up. God bless you one, God bless you all. I guess so. <laughs> Let's uh, thank Minister Clayton one more time for delivering such a powerful word. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now we're going to uh, go out and enjoy continue to enjoy this day that God has made. And since I still own that RV until tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, we're going to find someplace else to go. Maybe be Rehoboth Beach. I don't know. But, but we're getting out of here today. That's right. <laughs> huh? Paul Harmon, you have something to say? Yes, sir. When is the cook-off? August. August. 
and you can keep your little nasty rib right at home. Come on, choir. <laughs> oh, man. No, no. no. <laughs> I've got joy in my soul, God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all this well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. No matter what you say, my war clothes are on. I might be in a daze, but you can't have my praise. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. So this means war. This means, this means war. This means, this means war. You can't have my 